Volvo's second generation XC90 is a seven seat luxury SUV that's already given key rivals like Audi's Q7 and the Land Rover Discovery a lot to think about. Safe, efficient, clever, practical and stylish, this car continues to position the Swedish maker as a credibly prestigious automotive brand. Now, this car is better still thanks to the introduction of mild hybrid engine tech. Here's the car that began Volvo's modern era, the second generation XC90. This large luxury SUV established new standards for the brand when this model was originally announced back in 2014. And the company's recent move towards full electrification will reset those standards once again. The improved XC90 model we're going to look at here, a range announced in the spring of 2019, has reflected that trend with fresh, mild hybrid technology. Plus, the lineup's got a light update. Time to take a fresh look at this car. First, a quick XC90 recap, should you need one. The first generation design arrived just after the turn of the century in 2002, but its Ford-derived engineering had passed its sell-by date by the time the Chinese conglomerate Geely paid $1.3 billion to buy Volvo from Ford in 2010. Ten times that amount was then invested by the new owner in the fresh SPA scalable product architecture platform and new two-litre drive E engines needed for a range of future Volvo models. This second generation XC90 represented the first fruits of that investment and has since contributed usefully to the brand's spiralling sales. But it must evolve, hence this revised range's inclusion of mild hybrid B5 diesel and petrol engines that together replace the conventional D5 diesel that the majority of buyers of this SUV previously chose. Plus, the T8 twin-engine plug-in hybrid petrol electric variant gets a much-needed boost in its all-electric driving range capability, up from 22 to 29 miles. There's also a light restyle that sees smarter bumpers and a revised grille. And if you haven't tried an XC90 since this Mark II model's original introduction, you'll find that a whole host of extra camera-driven safety features have been introduced into it. Otherwise, things are much as they were. All XC90s continue to provide the sort of proper full-size seven-seat versatility that few rivals can credibly offer, and a cool, authentic brand of Scandinavian charm that's really quite appealing. It all sounds promising, doesn't it? Time to put this car to the test. It's hard not to have a mild feeling of ecological insecurity about driving a large luxury SUV. Yet in recent times, the brands who make them have done much to advance the efficiency of their products. Very soon that will involve banishing the diesel engines that most cars of this kind use. Volvo's already said that the black pump fueled unit featuring in this XC90 won't be replaced. But before it goes, the brand has treated it to a slice of electrified tech. The 2-litre diesel engine that used to be badge D5 is now known as a B5, the change of letter designating the integration of mild hybrid technology. Going forward, Volvo expects most XC90 buyers to choose this 235 horsepower unit. Just to confuse everyone, there's also a 250 horsepower B5 petrol model that uses all the same electrified tech, which turns out to be very similar to what you get from rival Mercedes and Audi mild hybrid setup. So there's a 48 volt battery, a KERS kinetic energy recovery system and an ISG integrated starter generator. So how does it all work? Well, every time you brake or take your foot from the throttle, the KERS setup captures surplus energy and stores it as electricity in an extra battery provided in the boot. That additional electricity can be used to boost the engine if needed while accelerating. The 62 mile an hour sprint from rest in the B5 diesel occupies 7.1 seconds en route to 137 miles an hour. And that power boost might also be used to restart the engine when the stop start system kicks in at low speeds or this surplus energy might be directed to help power auxiliary functions. Volvo's overall objective here wasn't to provide Prius-like periods of electric-only driving, but instead make the engine more efficient via smoother transitions between driving, cruising and resting. 
That's all been aided by revisions to the automatic gearbox and the implementation of the brand's first brake-by-wire system. But it's not really necessary to know any of this if you're an XC90 B5 driver. The technology is so seamlessly built into the powertrain that you simply don't notice it. There are certainly no fancy graphics, nor do you have to press any buttons or plug anything in. Of course, you might want to plug your XC90 in. That's what you'll be regularly doing if you opt for the alternative T8 twin-engine variant we're trying here, with its petrol, electric powertrain and plug-in hybrid usability. Unlike Mercedes and Audi, Volvo isn't offering a full EV in the large SUV segment. Not yet, anyway. In the T8, a 303 horsepower turbocharged, supercharged petrol engine drives the front wheels, while an 87 horsepower electric motor propels those at the back, powered by a battery pack neatly packaged away in the transmission tunnel. As part of the changes made to this revised XC90 lineup, that lithium ion battery is now slightly larger than before, up from 10.4 kilowatt hours to 11.6 kilowatt hours. Hence, a useful boost in this T8 model's operating range from 22 to 29 miles, though charging times are slightly longer too. There's also a 25 horsepower startup motor generator that pitches in from time to time to smooth any gaps in torque delivery between the two main power sources. In a T8, it's all enough to deliver a set of stats that it's rather hard to get your head round. A total output of 390 horsepower, enough to propel nearly 2.3 tonnes of Gothenburg real estate from rest to 62 miles an hour in just 5.5 seconds and onto a top speed of 140 miles an hour, which is the kind of storming performance you'd get in this segment from, say, a Porsche Cayenne S, matched with official fuel and CO2 readings that potentially could equal those of a frugal super mini. That's assuming you select the most performance orientated of the six driving settings that T8 owners are offered. The power mode that sees both petrol and electric units permanently working together. In the case of this particular test car, power has been replaced by a Polestar engineered mode you can pay extra to specify, which boosts engine output by 14 horsepower while quickening gear shift timings and throttle response. The Polestar engineered option can also be specified in the only non-electrified XC90 variant, the more conventional petrol T6, which uses a 310 horsepower version of the same turbocharged, supercharged engine fitted to the T8. Even without the Polestar package, an XC90 T6 will make 62 miles an hour in six and a half seconds on the way to 140 miles an hour. Talking of drive modes, well, these vary depending on the engine you choose. All XC90 variants get an off-road setting, selectable below 25 miles an hour for muddy tracks. And across the range, there's an individual mode that offers one-touch access to your preferred powertrain, braking, suspension and steering characteristics, selectable from a centre dash My Car menu. Otherwise, though, the drive settings provided can be different. The B5 and T6 models get the brand's usual comfort, eco and dynamic modes that alter throttle, response, gear shift timings and steering feel. On a T8, though, the mainstream modes that you're offered have more of an electrified remit, the default one being a hybrid setting that sees the car's two engines cutting in and out as necessary. In town, in an XC90 T8, you might want to revert to the pure mode, where priority is given to the electric-only operation. There's even a save option so that on a longer trip, you can hold the battery's charge until you get to the city driving you might have to do at the end of the journey. On slippery tarmac in a T8, you'd select constant all-wheel drive, which sees the petrol engine and the electric motor operating together to maximise traction. Enough on modes, engines and electrification. What's this car like to drive? Well, the answer we gave when we first tested it back in 2015 was that we were pleasantly surprised by the handling dynamics, thanks to the big improvement made over the previous model. The segment standard in this regard has advanced a little since, but the XC90 still feels class competitive with its neat balance between comfort and agility. It can't match a KN or an X5 across twistier tarmac, but then you wouldn't expect it to. 
Grip and traction are pretty good, provided differently according to powertrain choice. The B5 and T6 models feature the usual on-demand all-wheel drive system that puts most of the power down through the front wheels. This T8, in contrast, as mentioned earlier, uses an electric motor to drive the rear axle. The extra weight of this and its associated battery pack means that this plug-in variant sways a fraction more through the turns. On all XC90s, the steering, which can be adjusted for feedback force, isn't a especially feelsome in any of its settings, but it's precise and accurate, making quick progress along narrow, twisting country lanes a lot easier and quicker than you might expect it would be. On the highway, overall refinement is pretty good, though other rivals do a better job of suppressing tyre roar and suspension noise. On the subject of damping, we've noted that potholes and speed humps are felt rather more keenly than we'd like, though Volvo does offer a potential solution to this issue in the form of its active 4C chassis package, which gives you four corner adaptive dampers and electric air suspension, all of it working through the settings of the selectable drive modes we mentioned earlier. This setup makes quite a lot of difference, so it's disappointing that the Swedish brand doesn't offer it as standard. It's worth noting that air sprung adaptive suspension doesn't cost extra on key rivals like Audi's Q7, BMW's X5, or six cylinder versions of the Mercedes GLE. Is any real off piste prowess available to XC90 owners? Well, there's a reasonable amount by the modest standards applicable in this class, thanks to a reasonable 227 millimetres of ground clearance, which can be boosted by a further 40 if you specify air suspension. Despite that, you won't want to be venturing down much more than a muddy track in this car, though Volvo includes hill descent control as part of its off-road driving mode and quotes a reasonable set of off-road stats. There's an approach angle of 24 degrees, a departure angle of 21 degrees and a breakover angle of 23 degrees, plus a wading depth of up to 450 millimetres. All reasonable figures for this class of car. More relevant for most owners will be the 2,700 kilo towing weight applicable to the B5 and T6 variants. Bear in mind that this falls to 2,400 kilos on the T8. Perhaps of more interest to most likely buyers though will be this XC90's potential for a degree of highway orientated autonomous driving technology thanks to its standard pilot assist system. This is a setup that at cruising speeds of up to 80 miles an hour can effectively drive for you. It's able to take care of the steering, throttle and braking on major routes, reading the white lines on the road and keeping you firmly between them. As with the Mercedes version of this system, you have to keep your hands on the steering wheel for the system to be operable. A piercing beep admonishes you if you let go of it, reminding you of the safety first remit that governs so much about this car's design. And if you're a potential buyer, that's exactly as you'd want a Volvo of this kind to be. No significant changes have been made to the look of this second generation XC90. None were really necessary thanks to styling that designer Anders Gunnarsson describes as timeless, which is important given the long production life planned for this Mark II model. The shape, though substantial, is cleverly proportioned to look as compact as possible. So many large luxury SUVs appear bulky and intimidating. This isn't one of them. Which is impressive given that one of the aims of this car is to manage something its direct rivals really struggle with, namely the ability to seat seven adults in reasonable comfort. You need excellent packaging to be able to achieve that in an SUV measuring under five metres in length and a very sophisticated platform. In this case, the SPA or Scalable Product Architecture underpinnings developed as part of Volvo's $11 billion product transformation plan. The structure that sits upon this chassis is equally advanced, 40% of it fashioned from hot formed boron steel, the strongest found in the motor industry. Only very minor visual changes feature with this revised version of the Mark II model. Tiny tweaks to the bumper and the air intakes plus extra black trim on this R design model. There's also this slightly redesigned front grille, which as before features Volvo's traditional Ironmark logo at its centre and will be finished in either black or silver depending on trim level. Otherwise, it's as you were, with a raked back windscreen flowing into this sculpted bonnet. 
It's these LED front headlights, though, that first catch your eye. Their so-called Hammer of Thor design, emphasised by distinctive hammer-shaped daytime lighting guides that also flash orange when you indicate. Lower down, this model's SUV pretensions are emphasised by this silver skid plate. From the side, the XC90 looks resolutely practical and unsporty, yet still manages a sense of purpose thanks to this strong upper shoulder line and this prominent lower crease that gives the flanks some shape. These large arches really need to be filled by something a little more substantial than the base model's 19-inch rims. A range of sizes are available right up to the biggest 22-inch five double-spoke alloys that feature here. With big wheels like this, though, you'll need to make sure that air suspension is featured if you're not to subsequently rather hobble your car with an over-firm ride. Move to the rear, and there's a look that if you know your luxury SUVs could only belong to an XC90, thanks to these 3D tail lights that emphasise the distinctive body shoulder line and border the tailgate, flowing up into this smart roof mounted spoiler. Lower down, twin exhaust pipes with chromed sleeves poke from the corners of the rear skid plate in what Volvo hopes is a potent finishing touch. Plush inscription spec models are now marked out by a full width chrome strip across the upper part of the bumper. Time to take a look inside. We liked the front of cabin experience served up by this XC90 when we first tested it back in 2015, and we still do. It really is very nice indeed. The work of Volvo's British interior design director, Robin Page. He's created a cabin that's simple, elegant, and very uncluttered with only eight buttons on the fascia. The remaining functions you'd normally access through confusing rows of little switches on the dash have been relocated into the menu options that lie behind the big, easy-to-use icons you'll find on a smart infotainment colour touchscreen that's presented portrait-style on the centre console, like the monitor you'll find in a top Tesla. We've called it a touchscreen. In fact, the swipe functionality of this large nine inch display works by intersecting light rays rather than touch. So you don't need to actually touch the screen, merely put your finger near it. This means you can operate it wearing gloves, an important consideration in cold climates such as that in this car's home market. This is assuming you don't want to use the system's voice controlled functionality, which seems to be a lot more intuitive in this car than it is in some rivals. But whatever your preferred mode of operation, you can use this setup not only to access the usual navigation, stereo, phone and informational features, but also a wide selection of cloud-based applications for things like internet radio, seamless music streaming and updates on everything from weather reports to parking prices. You'll glimpse more high-tech screen technology through the three-spoke wheel courtesy of Volvo's 12.3-inch active TFT crystal driver's information display. As is now de rigueur in the luxury SUV segment, this is one of those virtual instrument clusters that replaces conventional instrument gauges. If you select either the pure or hybrid driving modes, the right-hand virtual dial switches from being a rev counter into an eco-meter display, which is neat, but overall you'd have to say that this screen setup isn't quite as customizable as you'll find elsewhere in this segment. You can't configure it to show full navigation mapping across its entire width, for instance, as would be possible in a rival Audi or Range Rover. But navigation information can sit between the two virtual dials or audio info if you prefer. Plus, of course, you can change the colors and graphics. There are four selectable layouts, glass, minimalistic, chrome rings, and a red tinged performance setting. You'll not be looking at this instrument screen very much if you specify a key optional extra, the head-up display that projects key driving information, your speed and satellite navigation directions, for example, onto the bottom of the windscreen. Volvo's designed the multifunction steering wheel to make this feature easy to see, though to our eyes made it a little ugly in the process. Otherwise, though, this cabin's an aesthetic triumph, immaculately made and full of premium touches like this diamond cut start stop control switch and the slatted cover for this center dash compartment. Here we've got metal mesh inlays, but depending on spec, you can also have inlays in finishes like walnut, ash and carbon fiber. 
Look around you and the intricate detailing continues. Carpets inspired by thick Swedish rugs, interior colours influenced by the Scandinavian landscape and superbly comfortable seats that can be specified to heat, ventilate or massage you with power adjustable side support and front cushion extensions. And through it all, charismatic little signs of brand heritage are never far away. The little Swedish flag sewn into the driver's seat stitching and the since 1959 legend on the belt buckle reminding you who invented the three-point belt. We like the technical niceties too. The clean zone interior air quality system, for example. This automatically switches to recirculation mode if outside conditions change, say in a polluted city centre or when you enter a smoky tunnel. The 360 degree parking camera system is another nice to have feature, including a rear camera you'll want because over the shoulder visibility isn't all that great. You'll probably want an audio system upgrade. We've got the excellent 600 watt Harman Kardon set up here. It's huge dash top speaker, one of 13 positioned around the cabin. Even better is the 19 speaker, 1400 watt Bowers and Wilkins sound system that can play your music through three modes, studio, individual stage and concert hall. The latter setting aims to replicate the experience of sitting in the Gothenburg concert hall and works particularly well for orchestral or classical music. If a better setup is available on any car in this segment, we've yet to hear it. Finding the right driving position is easy thanks to plenty of seat and wheel adjustability and the fact that the pedals aren't slightly offset as is sometimes the case with rivals. All round visibility is good too thanks to slim front and rear pillars plus rear parking sensors are standard fit. As for interior practicality, well, you'll be storing most of your odds and ends either in this reasonably sized glove box or in the leather lidded storage box between the seats, which incorporates a couple of USB ports and can also include an optional CD player. Ahead of that, the smart sliding cover we referenced earlier conceals a couple of cup holders, a small tray and a 12 volt port. There's also a lidded coin tray just ahead of the gear lever, an optional net in the front passenger footwell, a cubby by the driver's right knee and ticket clips on both vanity mirrors, plus another on the lower driver's corner of the windscreen. It's a pity though that the door pockets are so relatively small and that there's no overhead compartment for your sunglasses. Time to take a seat in the middle row. Your middle row passengers are well catered for with individual seats that slide and recline for greater comfort on longer journeys. And here we've got the optional huge panoramic glass roof fitted, which gives this part of the cabin a light, airy feel, which is something we think you'd really want in a seven seat car. We'll also suggest you consider the optional family pack fitted, which includes window sun blinds, child locks, and an integrated fold out center booster seat. On longer trips, you'll appreciate the incorporated B-pillar vents, the bright LED overhead reading lights, and this neatly designed and beautifully stitched central armrest. It incorporates lidded storage for valuables, a storage tray and a pair of small pop-out cup holders, plus beverages can sit in the provided moulded recesses in the little door pockets. There are also seat back nets and coin recesses in the door armrests. The transmission tunnel is a little prominent, but it's thoughtfully covered with a rubberized coating, which will be easy to clean. And just above it are digital climate controls and a 12 volt socket, which can on request be swapped out for an optional 230 volt three pin plug point. Right, what about this proper seven seat functionality? We mentioned earlier, time to put that aspect of this XC90 to the test. Our third row seating in a car of this class tends to be designed only for children. But here, Volvo claims to have created rearmost pews, claim to be suitable for anyone up to five foot seven inches in height. So let's see. Well, getting into the back row takes a little bit of muscular dexterity. Ah. And as an adult, you'll only be able to install yourself with any kind of comfort if you prevail upon those ahead to move their seats forward a little. But if that's possible, we could believe that a couple of fully sized adults could cope okay back here over short to medium length journeys. The space on offer is marginally better than you'd get in a competing Audi Q7 and significantly better than you'd find in seven seat versions of rivals like BMW's X5, the Mercedes GLE or the Range Rover Sport.
The chairs themselves are exactly the same as those in the middle, so you're not fobbed off with the kind of fold-out occasional seats you get in some competitors. And they're positioned in so-called theatre style, slightly raised and set inwards to offer a better view in your direction of travel. Each seat also gets its own cup holder and trinket tray, plus there are C-pillar vents, a storage tray between the two chairs, and even ceiling speakers. In short, it's all been very well thought out. Finally, let's take a look at luggage space accessed via an electrically powered tailgate. You can operate either by boot button from the key fob or if you happen to be approaching the car laden down with luggage by waving your foot beneath the bumper. It rises to reveal a luggage area you access via a rather high loading lip, though models with air suspension offer a neat set of buttons that will lower this by 50 millimetres. As for the boot space on offer, well, that's fallen slightly with the introduction of the mild hybrid powertrain, but it's still very class competitive. Inevitably, capacity is going to be a little restricted with all seven seats in place, though even in this configuration, you still get 302 litres of luggage space. Thanks to a space-saving rear suspension layout, that's much more room than you get in a rival Audi Q7 or Land Rover Discovery with all seven seats erect. And it's a figure that rises to as much as 356 litres if you load up to the roof. Bear in mind, though, that the figures for this T8 twin-engine plug-in hybrid model are lower, a variant which must make room for the electric motor that sits upon its rear axle. With a T8 in seven-seat mode, it's 262 litres up to the window line and 316 litres up to the roof. Given the space restrictions with all the seats up, it's just as well that the basic space all XC90s provide in this configuration is pretty useful. With compartment areas in the side cargo walls, a 12 volt socket, retractable shopping bag hooks, four silver tie down points and an underfloor compartment that's rather compromised in size on this T8 model. There's also this useful flap which opens up on the boot floor to stop items sliding forward which can be closed to place slim items away from prying eyes or keep muddy boot marks out of sight and out of mind. Most of the time though, of course, you'll probably be running the car with these third row chairs folded down. The retracting process made much easier than the back-breakingly fumbly machinations you have to go through in a rival Land Rover Discovery to achieve the same end result. Once that's completed, there's a lot of room to play with. On the B5 and T6 variants, there's 680 litres if you load to the window line and as much as 1,007 litres if you load to the roof. Again, you can expect a reduction in those figures if you opt for the T8 twin engine variant to 640 and 967 litres respectively. Either way, you can improve on the figures we've quoted by sliding the second row seats forward if you've uncomplaining middle row passengers on board, or by making the second row seat backs more upright. Most owners want this mesh partition which can be attached to the ceiling, separating the cargo area from the passenger compartment. Getting more room, of course, means folding the middle row. Now, on the B5 and T6 variants, that frees up 1,045 litres up to the window, or 1,856 litres if you load up to the roof. For the T8, the respective figures are 1,005 and 1,816 litres. Either way, that's nothing like as much as you get in a boxy Land Rover Discovery, but these figures are directly comparable to those you'd get from rival Audi Q7 derivatives and significantly better than the ones you'd achieve in equivalent versions of BMW's X5. There's no option to further increase capacity by folding forward the front passenger seat, but otherwise this XC90 is as practically versatile as most owners will need it to be. Sales of this car in our market are split 50-50 between fleet and retail, and from the launch of this revised Mark II model XC90 in the spring of 2019, prices were pitched in the 53 to 72,000 pound bracket, the variants depending of course on your choice of trim and engine. And we'll start with trim. There are three basic packages, Momentum, R-Design, which is what we have here, and Top Inscription. 
In each case, you've the option of paying more for a plusher pro version of the spec level you've chosen. The premium is anything between £2,800 and £4,900, depending on the model in question. Here, for instance, we've got an R-Design Pro variant. Whatever XC90 derivative you select, all models have seven seats and come with all-wheel drive, with that drive provided through an eight-speed Geartronic automatic gearbox from a four-cylinder, two-litre engine offered in four very different forms. The mild hybrid models that most XC90 customers choose are the most affordable in the range. Around 75% of buyers go for the 235 horsepower twin-turbo B5 variant, but there's also a mild hybrid 250 horsepower petrol version available, confusingly also badged B5, which costs £550 less than its diesel counterpart. The other two engines on offer are petrol powered and only available with the pricier R design and inscription trim levels. The one you're most likely to want is the plug in hybrid T8 twin engine derivative we're trying here, which from the launch of the revised range was priced from around £67,000. This means a premium of around £10,000 over the B5 variant, so you've really got to want that plug-in technology. Finally, there's a minority interest T6 petrol model, which uses the only engine in the range that isn't in some way electrified, a 310 horsepower unit. Right, let's move on to the mainstream rivals that potential XC90 buyers will be looking at in the premium large SUV segment, with our competitor price focus being against the B5 mild hybrid diesel versions of this Volvo that most customers will be considering. The XC90 seven-seat format means that this car tends not to compete against models in this segment that can't be ordered with three seating rows. Cars like Volkswagen's Touareg, Porsche's Cayenne and the Range Rover Velar. Instead, potential buyers will most commonly be looking at either a Land Rover Discovery, a Mercedes GLE or an Audi Q7, virtually all versions of which come with seven seats as standard, or perhaps either a BMW X5 or a Range Rover Sport, where a couple of occasional extra chairs in the boot can be added in as an optional extra. Of all the SUVs just mentioned, the Audi Q7 is the only one that in its volume forms can directly rival the XC90 by offering efficient mild hybrid self-charging tech. Mercedes has this technology too, but at the time of this test restricted its availability to pricey high performance petrol variants of its GLE model. Both the Q7 and the GLE cost much the same as this Volvo, but offer slightly less space for luggage and third row seating. The Land Rover Discovery does have more interior space and base versions of it will save you around £5,000 over an equivalent XC90, but that Solihull SUV's conventional engines are massively less frugal than those of this Volvo with smoky emissions that'll mean a much higher tax bill. Plus, if you equalise the spec of a base Discovery to that of a base XC90, you'll find that that £5,000 price gap will diminish substantially. We can't imagine that many potential XC90 buyers will choose a seven-seat BMW X5 or Range Rover Sport over this Volvo either. Both are significantly less efficient and more expensive, the Range Rover Sport particularly so, very cramped in the third row. Finally, a word about your options if your focus is on plug-in power. No other plug-in model in this segment offers seven seats, so if you need three seating rows in your large luxury plug-in SUV, your decision might well be made in Volvo's favour on that criteria alone. If seating for seven isn't crucial and you want to look at some other options in the class, probably the closest one is Audi's Q7 55 TFSIE, which has 375 horsepower and costs about the same. You could save a fraction and get BMW's X5 xDrive 45e or go for the Mercedes GLE 350DE, but that car has less power. A Range Rover Sport P400e plug-in costs around £7,000 more than an XC90 T8 and a Porsche Cayenne e-hybrid costs around £5,000 more. 
Lexus offers a full hybrid in this class that can be had with three seating rows, the RXL, but that's a full hybrid of the self-charging variety, which means it can't be plugged in and therefore can't run for significant periods in full electric mode. That Lexus model would save you around £10,000 up front over an XC90 T8, but this Volvo would claw back much of that difference over time thanks to its better fuel consumption and lower taxation exposure. Enough with the comparisons. If, having considered all of this, you might well come to the conclusion that an XC90 is exactly what you want. If so, you'll want to know just how generous Volvo has been with the standard spec. So let's look in detail at that. There's plenty, even if you opt for the most affordable momentum trim level. Such a base spec XC90 would feature 19 inch alloy wheels and all versions of this Volvo have roof rails, front and rear parking sensors, auto headlamps and wipers, and a power operated tailgate. Plus there are LED headlights that at night can bend with the road and dip themselves automatically and a class-leading package of electronic safety equipment, which we'll get to later. Inside on all XC90s, there's full leather trim and a powered heated driver's seat with lumbar support and memory settings. You could also tick off two-zone electronic climate control, an auto-dimming interior mirror, and a 12.3-inch active TFT crystal driver's information display to replace the usual instrument dials. This will change in layout according to the drive mode settings you choose. The other key cabin display is the nine inch center console touchscreen, your access point to this car's clever Sensus Connect infotainment system. From here, or via voice control, you can access a 10 speaker, 330 watt high performance sound system with DAB digital radio. Plus, there's a census navigation system with traffic information and European mapping. Plus, as you'd expect, Bluetooth phone compatibility and USB and aux in ports. The first year of ownership also includes use of a P-SIM card with 100 gigabytes of data that gives you a Wi-Fi hotspot for up to eight devices, integration of real-time traffic information into the navigation and worry-free roaming across 42 countries. Only one important connectivity feature is missing from the standard kit tally and unfortunately it's a rather important one. Rather unforgivably, given the prices being asked, the smartphone integration package that gives you Apple CarPlay and Android Auto smartphone mirroring costs extra, which is strange because potentially you might be using your smartphone quite a lot as part of owning this car. That's because all XC90 owners get free use of the clever Volvo On Call app. This gives you stolen vehicle tracking plus an emergency and breakdown call system. And in addition, it enables you to plan journeys in advance at home or at your desk, then download them into your car. With the on-call app, you can also monitor your XC90's fuel level, log journey data, check when the car's due for a service and lock or unlock the doors all via your smartphone trip information for the last 100 days can also be downloaded, making life easier for company car drivers when claiming fuel expenses. You can even activate a timer that will remote start the engine, warming or cooling the cabin while you have your breakfast. So, quite a lot comes as standard, though many who choose base momentum spec embellish it with the Pro Pack we mentioned earlier, which for £2,800 more adds Nappa soft leather upholstery, a head-up display, headlamp washers and heat for the steering wheel and washer nozzles. On an XC90 Momentum Pro variant, the front seats come with cushion extensions and wider ranging multi-directional lumbar support. There's multi-coloured theatre lighting and you get illumination for the tread plates, door pockets and cup holders. Pro-spec buyers also get active bending headlamps that adapt to traffic and road conditions and turn with the bends. 
which is pretty much everything you really require on this car. Now, should you go further and consider an upgrade to the pricier R design or top inscription trim levels? Well, as we said, you'll need to do that if you want the option to be able to consider either the T6 or the T8 engines. And both these pricier trim packages give you smarter 20 inch diamond cut alloy wheels and rear doors with integrated sun curtains. And at this level in the range, there's standardization for features like front seat cushion extensions, multi-directional lumbar support, multicolored theater lighting, and illumination for the tread plates, door pockets, and cup holders. Avoid the T8 engine, and you'll get front LED fog lamps and a space saver spare wheel too. The R design spec we have here is our market's best selling trim level and specifically on these variants you get extra high gloss black exterior embellishment, dual integrated exhaust pipes and dark tinted rear and rear side windows. Inside the R design pack gives you a sports steering wheel with gear shift paddles, a black headliner, sports pedals, sports floor mats, a sports leather gear knob and metal mesh cabin inlays. Find the £4,250 more that Volvo wants for an R-Design Pro model, which is what we've got here, and you get their larger 22-inch five double-spoke alloy wheels and Volvo's active 4C chassis, which gives you four corner adaptive dampers and what we'd see to be a key XC90 feature, air suspension. Plus, you get the various Pro Pack staple features, the head-up display, the heated steering wheel, the headlamp washers, the heated washer nozzles and the active bending headlamps we mentioned earlier. That only leaves the range topping inscription models which are identifiable by a matte silver front grille, chromed lower side mouldings and more intricate 10 spoke 20 inch wheel rims. Appropriately these have an even plusher cabin feel, soft nappa leather upholstery matched with classy black ash cabin inlays and luxury floor mats. Avoid the T6 engine and you also get a shimmering Auroforge crystal gear lever. Finally, with flagship Inscription Pro spec, you're treated to 21 inch, eight multi-spoke alloy wheels, plus front seats that feature perforated ventilated upholstery, a massaging system and powered side supports. Inscription Pro spec also gives you that active 4C chassis with its adaptive damping and air suspension. And again, the various Pro Pack staple features, the head-up display, the heated steering wheel, the headlamp washers, the heated washer nozzles and the active bending headlamps. So that's taught you through the standard spec. Now, if you've glazed over during all that, here's a quick shortcut for you in getting your ideal XC90. Stick to a standard momentum model, then add a few well-chosen options. So what should they be? Well, we'd start with the active 4C chassis. It's an expensive option at just over 2000 pounds, but the air suspension and adaptive damping is key to the kind of very complete driving experience this Volvo is capable of providing. It's a pity that the Swedish brand doesn't provide this package as standard. You do, after all, get it without having to pay extra on all Audi Q7s, BMW X5s and six-cylinder Mercedes GLEs. As mentioned earlier, we also would have expected to find Apple CarPlay or Android Auto smartphone mirroring on a car of this price. As it is, the smartphone integration package necessary to get this costs £300 more. Though at least the subscription to use this isn't time limited as it is on a BMW. Volvo will throw smartphone integration in if you choose one of the audio system upgrades. There are two. Here we've been trying the 13 speaker 600 watt Harman Kardon setup. But even better is the 18 speaker Bowers and Wilkins premium stereo package with its special direct live technology. Developed by former music producer Michael Adenauer, it's described as the best sound system on four wheels and features a dual-like tweeter on top of the dashboard along with a 12-channel 1400-watt amplifier. Otherwise, it's mainly a case of selecting between the various extra cost packs that Volvo offers. If you've kids in mind, you'll very likely want the seven seat comfort pack with four zone climate control, a cooled glove box and third row 
air conditioning. There's also a family pack that protects the second row with power child locks and window sun curtains, while also adding an integrated seat booster cushion. Additionally, it'd be nice to have the winter pack, which is available with or without a head-up display, and gives you heat for the windscreen, steering wheel, and windscreen washer nozzles, plus a headlight cleaning system. Also, we'd be tempted by the Xenium pack we have here that gives you a park assist pilot system able to help you locate, then automatically steer you into the tightest spaces. A large glass panoramic roof and a parking camera 360 degree surround view setup. Those last two features, by the way, can also be ordered separately. Other key options you might like include heat for the outer rear seats in the second row, laminated side and rear windows, a CD player, a 230 volt three pin socket for middle row passengers and on momentum and inscription variants, dark tinted rear windows. If you've gone for a pro spec model, there's the no cost option of swapping its head up display for a heated windscreen if you decide that would be more use to you. Should you have gone for either a T6 or a T8 engined XC90, you might also want to check out the Polestar performance software optimization option. For £745 more, this gives you an extra Polestar engineered drive mode, which optimizes this Volvo's performance responses. You should notice this when overtaking, thanks to recalibrated gear shift points and quicker shift speeds, along with tweaks to throttle response and the mid-range power band. Plus, off-throttle response is more predictable for those times when you suddenly have to lift off the accelerator. Polestar Performance Software Optimization boosts total output on a T8 from 303 to 317 horsepower and on a T6 from 310 to 326 horsepower. Volvo's promising that a Polestar Optimization Pack will also be offered on the B5 models. What about aesthetics? Well, to start with, you'll need to bear in mind that unless you want your XC90 to be finished in solid ice white, you'll be paying your dealer more for one of the metallic or premium metallic colours. We've got premium metallic crystal white here. There's also a range of alloy wheels in 20, 21 and 22 inch sizes with availability depending on the model variant chosen. And for the inside, well, on the R design variant, you can add in carbon fiber inlays, Nappa soft leather perforated contour sports upholstery, and a special Nubuck headliner. Meanwhile, Momentum and inscription buyers can replace the leather upholstery with the seats trimmed in a tailored wool blend. And inscription buyers can swap their black ash cabin inlays for inlays in either gray ash, linear walnut, or metal mesh. Finally, there are the usual practical extras, a retractable tow bar, roof boxes, racks for skis, snowboards, kayaks and bikes, plus floor mats, sunshades, mud flaps, and a full range of child seats and booster cushions. If you've pets to carry, you can specify a dog gate with or without a plastic load liner, a dog harness, and maybe also a protective steel grill. For the cargo bay, there's a luggage net, a load compartment divider, a dirt cover, a load lashing strap, and two load compartment mats, one in molded plastic and the other made from textile and reversible. You can have a rear bumper protector, integrated LED illuminated side running boards, an illuminated tailgate scuff plate, and iPad holders for the second row. On the T8, you can specify a longer 4.5 metre Type 2 Mode 3 charge cable. On to safety, and here's an extraordinary statistic. Since the Volvo XC90 went on sale in the UK back in 2002, not a single person has been killed while driving one, nor has any passenger been killed in an XC90 accident. It is quite simply, according to official government statistics, the safest car on the road. And today, the company continues its safety ambitions with the most daring and far-reaching safety objective in the industry, that no one should ever be killed or seriously injured in a new Volvo. 
Meeting that objective means the need for a whole new level of safety. And sure enough, in every new Volvo we test these days, there's an IntelliSafe World First Safety Spec Edition that raises the standard that little bit higher. One of the most recently introduced features is oncoming collision mitigation by braking. There to detect vehicles heading towards you on the wrong side of the road. If a collision can't be avoided, this setup will brake your car automatically in order to give you more time to take avoiding action. Or if you can't, the speed reduction will at least help reduce the collision's effects. A quarter of all road accident deaths are caused by head-on collisions. Volvo's research has shown that even a 5 to 10 mile an hour speed reduction at the point of impact can make a big difference to the fate of the passengers. It's a setup well worth having and it builds on the advanced suite of safety systems that have done so much to improve the camera-driven safety provision of this Mark II XC90 since it was first introduced back in 2015. Now, impressively, nearly all of it's standard fit. Take the clever steer assist functionality that works at speeds of up to 87 miles an hour with what's called oncoming lane mitigation. If you move out of your lane to overtake or to turn and find yourself in the path of an oncoming vehicle, the system will warn you of the potential danger by automatically providing steering assistance to guide you safely back into your lane. That might be a little alarming for you if you're one of those habitual do or die overtakers. Then there are Volvo's so-called runoff road features. Runoff road mitigation warns you if you're veering off the road and putting your wheels near the verge. And if that's not enough to prevent you from leaving the tarmac, then runoff road protection cuts in. As with other similar systems, Mercedes pre-safe setup, for example, that potential accident scenario will see the seat belts automatically pre-tensioned and all the airbags immediately primed. What's unique about this setup, though, is that in a situation where the car is launched into the air and thumps down, as often happens in such a scenario, the front seat frames have been designed to collapse in a way that would protect your spine from severe damage, while at the same time, Volvo's usual whips protection guards against whiplash on your neck. A perhaps more familiar modern camera-driven safety feature for buyers in this segment is autonomous braking. That's the kind of system that uses a combined camera and radar unit at the top of the windscreen to scan the road ahead as you drive for potential accident hazards. A setup that can automatically break for you if a moving or stationary person or object is detected and you haven't noticed it. Even here, though, this Swedish brand has taken things to the next level. Volvo's version of autonomous braking is called City Safety with Steering Support. And, as that name suggests, it's a system that can not only automatically apply the brakes in extreme situations, but also one that can apply extra steering lock to help you turn away from a potential accident. This package should be able to allow you to avoid a collision entirely if the speed is under around 30 miles an hour, while reducing its severity if you're travelling faster than that. There are a number of inclusive aspects of this city safety technology that we really like. One is the full auto brake element. Let's say you're momentarily distracted and go to move off from a roundabout or come out of a turning directly in front of another motorist. Well, in this car, you won't be able to. Your XC90 will detect the oncoming vehicle and automatically apply the brakes to prevent the accident. Also built into the city safety system is the large animal detection feature. You might think that there's a relatively low likelihood of you ever hitting a large animal, but Volvo doesn't, and with good reason. Apparently, a third of all accidents in Sweden are of this type, so there's long been a genuine need for someone to do something about it. This particular setup was originally developed to deal with elk and moose, but for our shores, it's said to be particularly effective at warning you when large deer are approaching from the side of a dark road ahead. 
Other standard safety features include more familiar things like twin front side and curtain airbags plus a driver's knee bag, ISO fix child seat fastenings, a pedestrian friendly active bonnet and a road sign information display feature that pictures road signs as you pass them and displays them on the dash. The ABS setup has emergency brake assist for panic stops, while the stability and traction control systems include spin control, corner traction control, and an engine drag control feature that stops the car from skidding when the gearbox sharply down changes on a slippery surface. There's plenty of standard electronic assistance to keep you in the right place on the road too. Road edge detection steers you back into the centre of your lane if you veer slightly towards the road edge and a lane keeping aid does the same thing if you veer over the lane delineating markings at cruising speeds. Both scenarios are most likely to happen if you're feeling tired. So there's also a driver alert control system that monitors your driving reactions for drowsiness. We'll also mention the useful Volvo On Call app via which you get an emergency and roadside assistance support system that'll sense if your car's involved in a collision and alert a trained operator to immediately contact your vehicle. If no response is detected, the emergency services will be instantly informed. Also standard is Volvo's IntelliSafe Assist package. This gives you the radar-driven adaptive cruise control that will automatically regulate this XC90 speed on the highway and allows Volvo to fit its own interpretation of the current state of autonomous driving technology, the company's pilot assist system. This is a setup that at cruising speeds of up to 80 miles an hour can effectively drive for you. It's able to assist with the steering and take care of the throttle and braking on major roads, reading the white lines on the road and keeping you firmly between them. As with the Mercedes version of this system, which is an expensive extra on the rival GLE model, you have to keep your hands on the steering wheel for the system to be operable. A piercing beep admonishes you if you let go of it. If all that standard safety provision has impressed you, and it's certainly impressed us, you might be surprised to learn that Volvo sees that only as a safety starting point. Your dealer will probably prevail upon you to go further and pay extra for the optional IntelliSafe surround safety package we've been trying in this test car. This gives you three other included camera driven safety features. A cross traffic alert setup warns you if you're reversing out of a space into the path of an oncoming car, and a rear collision mitigation system uses rear facing radars to detect an impending rear end collision. If one's imminent, your XC90's tail lights will flash to alert the oncoming driver at the same time as your seat belts are tightened and the brakes are applied to prevent your vehicle being pushed out into oncoming traffic. The final IntelliSafe surround pack feature is a blind spot information system with steer assist setup and it's very clever. Like other camera driven blind spot setups, this one warns you if there's a vehicle you haven't seen when you're just about to pull out to overtake. However, this one goes further using the steer assist technology we mentioned earlier to automatically bring your car back into its own lane if you're traveling between 37 and 87 miles an hour. It's all very reassuring. Now, apparently a Volvo owner is 50% less likely to be involved in a crash than the average driver. You can see why. The vast majority of XC90 buyers will opt for the B5 mild hybrid version of this car, probably the diesel variant. As you'll know if you viewed our driving experience section, both petrol and diesel B5 models use powertrains electrified via brake-by-wire energy recovery and enhanced by Volvo's advanced kinetic energy recovery braking system. This setup claims to offer drivers up to 15% fuel savings and emission reductions in real world driving. Sounds promising. So let's get to the figures, all of which assume activation of the drive mode system's most frugal eco setting. Here, an eco coast function will automatically be activated for highway use, disconnecting the engine so that you're merely traveling on your car's kinetic energy. A prod on the throttle is all that's necessary to restore normal powered motion. 
Anyway, to the stats. An XC90 B5 diesel manages a WLTP rated combined cycle fuel figure of up to 44.1 mpg and an NEDC rated CO2 return of up to 154 grams per kilometre. Even the B5 petrol variant puts out no more than 174 grams per kilometre of CO2. To give you some class perspective on the B5 diesel's fuel and CO2 showing, we'll tell you that the equivalent figures for a rival Audi Q7 45 TDI are 33.2 2 mpg and 164 grams per kilometer. For a Land Rover Discovery SD4 diesel it's 33.6 mpg and 197 grams per kilometer and for a BMW X5 xDrive 30d the figures are 37.2 mpg and 159 grams per kilometer. Either way you're looking at quite a difference. It seems like Volvo's mild hybrid tech really does deliver on its claims. Helping here is the fact that most of the brand's Drive E power plants were pretty frugal even before they were electrified. Like all the company's engines, these turbocharged units are all two litres and four cylinders in size. They're light in weight and feature special iArt direct fuel injection, along with a clever twin turbo layout that gets a lot of air and fuel through the combustion chambers. The T6 petrol model though, which isn't electrified, adds supercharging to the turbo mix. Never a helpful thing for efficiency, and so it proves. An XC90 T6 model manages up to 28.8 mpg and up to 187 grams per kilometre of CO2. Given this, it's interesting that Volvo chose to use the T6 model's engine as a basis for the plug-in variant in the XC90 family. The T8 twin-engine petrol derivative we're trying here, which takes that 310 horsepower unit and mates it to an 87 horsepower electric motor driving the rear wheels. As part of the changes made to this updated Mark II XC90 lineup, Volvo's introduced a higher capacity battery to the T8, which has enhanced its all electric driving range by around 15%, so it's up from 22 to 29 miles, a useful increase. Theoretically, then, you could use an XC90 T8 every day without ever visiting a fuel station unless you needed to undertake a longer trip. That's assuming, of course, that you keep the lithium-ion battery fully charged. That'll take a little longer than before, thanks to the bigger battery. Owners can buy a wall box from Volvo that will charge their cars on 16 amp power in about three hours. If you're out and about and find a 10 amp public charging point, the needed time will be slightly lengthier, around four hours, while connecting up to a normal domestic three pin, six amp supply will take eight hours. Ultimately, to justify this T8 model's price premium, you really have to try and plug it in at every opportunity. Otherwise, you'll simply find yourself running a heavy petrol-powered SUV, and one that will need more frequent refueling than more conventional XC90 derivatives, because its fuel tank size falls from 71 to 50 litres due to the need to make space for the hybrid powertrain and the battery. If on the move you want to prioritise all electric progress, you can select a pure driving mode that prioritises electric only operation and would be useful in an urban environment. In everyday use though, most T8 owners will be driving in the hybrid mode that the car's powertrain automatically defaults to, a setting in which the vehicle will automatically alternate between petrol and electric power, and the basis for a faintly incredible sounding set of running cost figures, up to 113 mpg on the WLTP combined cycle and up to 52 grams per kilometre of NEDC rated CO2. A driver performance option on the centre dash screen graphically shows how frugally you've been driving your XC90 and on this T8 model also includes an interactive graphic showing what's currently being powered by what. While we can't imagine any XC90 T8 owner ever actually achieving the brand's officially quoted returns, the important thing is that the government believes them. So business users will be able to write down as much as 100% of the cost of this car against their tax liability. And a 40% taxpayer could be driving an XC90 T8 while incurring a BIK tax bill that would be way less than half of what they would pay for a conventional diesel-powered large luxury SUV in this class. If you're a business buyer browsing in this segment, these are figures that will reward a bit of thought if you're just about to blindly sign on the dotted line for a conventional diesel model. What else? Well, residual values are predicted to be strong, with independent experts reckoning that this car will almost exactly match the depreciation of a rival Land Rover Discovery. 
This means that after the usual three-year 60,000-mile period, an XC90 will cling on to around 52 to 55 percent of its original asking price. The T8 model sits in the 49 to 52 percent bracket. Either way, that's not bad for a big luxury SUV and well comparable to the kind of depreciation you'd get from the BMW and Mercedes alternatives in this class. On to insurance groupings, which should be reasonably affordable by class standards. To give you an idea, the B5 diesel variant in base momentum trim is rated at Group 37, which is better than an equivalent Audi Q7, Group 41, but not as good as a comparable Land Rover Discovery, Group 31. The more powerful T6 petrol model is rated at either Group 39 or Group 40. For the T8, it's Group 43 or 45. The centre screen has a selectable service option which shows you how many days remain before the car's next maintenance visit and the useful Volvo On Call app can be programmed to autonomously realise when a service is due then automatically book it for you at a dealership of your choice. You can also set up remote diagnostic capability that enables a workshop technician to remotely read data from your car. On the subject of maintenance, that should be relatively affordable for a car of this kind. With intervals every year or 18,000 miles, it's every 15,000 miles for a rival discovery. Three or five year prepaid servicing packages are available to help you budget ahead. And the warranty is the usual three year 60,000 mile package. Volvo seems to be flourishing under foreign ownership. You might have expected Chinese control to stifle the company's Scandinavian character. Instead, what we've been given here is a return to Swedish charisma and an emphasis on the cool, restrained style and real-world practicality epitomised by the Gothenburg brand. This will be the last ever large Volvo to use diesel power, but at least it does so more efficiently in this revised version of this Mark II model. The Volume B5 version will easily outsell all the other variants combined, and we can see why. There are no driving downsides for its mild hybrid tech, and the electrification makes a decent difference to cleanliness and frugality. Plus, if you really don't like fueling from the black pump, there's always a petrol B5 option. The useful increase in the all-electric driving range of the T8 twin-engine plug-in variant we've been testing here is also welcome. Safety provision is also a key reason why you might buy an XC90. Is this the industry's very safest car? Well, the accident stats suggest that, and most of these were compiled before Volvo enhanced this SUV's camera-driven safety kit tally to the impressive standard delivered by this current version. Of course, this Volvo's not perfect. There are still sharper handling choices and more capable off-roaders in this sector. In balancing its own blend of virtues, though, this XC90 sets its own class standard and in doing so establishes a family benchmark amongst luxury SUVs that rivals struggle to match. Company founders Asar Gabrielson and Gustav Larsson would have liked this car. More importantly, though, if you're shopping in this segment, we think you will too.